I so appreciate all the good that you've done for me um, and other people. But at the same time, um, I can't deny the fact that you've also behaved abominably, <laughs> really, really badly. Um, and I understand why you think that it's not a problem. Um, though part of my brain just goes, <sighs> how can you possibly not see that it's a problem? But I understand, you know, the way you were brought up and um, the kind of belief system that you subscribe to. Um, that you think that for so long as you didn't mean to harm anyone that no harm was caused. But in actual fact, um, I've been talking to um, a lot of the people that actually have left because of the way you behaved with them. And um, honestly, Rimshe, some of them have been in therapy for years, years and years and years. It's cost them huge amounts of money. But it's not the money that's the problem. You betrayed their trust so deeply. Some of them you turned completely away from the Dharma. Some have been turned completely away from religion altogether. Um, I, some, you know, maybe some of them hate you, but not the ones that I've been talking to. You know, they, they're good people, but they, you know, they have been hurt. You have hurt them, Rinpoche. And, you know, I'm being really direct here. Like, I'm really, I mean, I'm very, very sorry that you're sick, and I still pray for you, and I hope so much that, that you know, the cancer all gets treated, and, and I hope you're getting the right care, and that you're doing what the doctors tell you to do, you know, and actually getting the care that you need. Um, but from my point outside, looking in, and I don't just speak for myself, you know, there are a lot of people who also feel the same way. It doesn't look like you've accepted responsibility for the harm that you've caused to these people. And in terms of what you taught me <laughs> about healing, you know, you're sick, right? And you need healing. So what you need to do is purify your negative karma. So it looks to me like there's an enormous amount of negative karma that you've created over 30, 40 years of um, treating people pretty badly. And that negative karma is not going to get purified until you use the four powers of Vajrasattva. You know, now, I, look, who am I to be saying this to you? Only a student that you have taught me. This is what you have taught me, and I'm now just saying it back to you. You know, it was so obvious to me. Why? Because you taught me. And because those teachings, are, they're true, they're real, they, they make sense to me. You know, and what makes sense to me is that, of course, you have to regret, you have to recognize the harm you've done, regret it, and apologize. That's, that's the regret. That's the, the apology is, um, is making the reparation. You know, that's, that's how you heal. You start to heal those people that you've harmed. You know, when they hear an apology from you, they will start to heal on a very, very deep level because they will then know that you recognize what you've done to them. Because the hardest thing, one of the hardest things that they um, found was the sense that you really didn't care about them. Now, you probably find that really hard to believe. You probably say, oh, I do care about them. I did care about them. So show them that you care about them and apologize. You know, it's not too late. But if you keep holding on to this kind of um, idea that you're a crazy wisdom master and that anything that you can, anything you do is absolutely fine, it's damaging. It's damaging everything that you've built up. It's damaging more than just Rigpa. It's damaging all of Tibetan Buddhism. Because it's not true. It's not the behavior of a crazy wisdom master. It's the behavior of someone who's got emotional and, you know, mental problems. We all have Buddha nature. And we can all get deluded, every single one of us. I remember the story you told about the guy who was practicing up in the, the yogi, was practicing in a cave above the village. And he toddled on down one day. He thought, oh, maybe it's time I taught. Then he came down into the village and he taught. First of all, he taught about... Um, the ego and how um, the ego, you know, can 
get make you completely deluded. And then he taught about the Buddha nature and how on that level we we're all pure. And at the end of him, when he, at the end of his talk, when he asked for questions, this old lady in the back, she said, "Oh well," she said, "Lama, you've given me great hope because the teachings on Buddha nature show me that even for me, this old lady, there is hope. And the teachings on ego show me that even for you, Lama, there is danger." So I'm just giving you your own teachings back to you. I know there's some people out there who are pretty negative and um, are, do appear to be kind of bent on destroying you. I'm not one of those people. I'm not one of those people. I want to see you heal. I want to see you heal and honestly, the first step, and I want to see Rigpa heal as well. And the thing is that the people running Rigpa are still looking to you to guide them. And for so long as you don't recognize that you have behaved inappropriately, they're not going to recognize it either. And that means that anything that they do is just a band-aid. It's not really solving the problem. And the problem is really, Rinpoche, is that we were taught to worship you. And I think you'll agree, that's not what the teachings are about. Your job was to reflect our own Buddha nature back to us, and then we were supposed to trust our own Buddha nature. Or maybe I've got that wrong. But what happened is that we were we are putting we we ended up putting um, looking at you as if you're a savior, you know, and giving our power to you, um, giving everything to you, you know, running after you, trying to obey your every whim. And why? Because we thought that that was going to make us more enlightened? But that's not what I've seen. That's not what it's been doing. It's not the result that I've seen. But for a lot of people, it just beats them down. You know, it just increases their ego because they start to feel really bad about themselves. So um, what I see now is a situation where there's a whole lot of lamas who are... You know, they're honoring the good that you've done, and that's great. But they're turning, they're sticking their heads in the sand. They're turning away from this problem, which is not just you and Rigpa, but other Tibetan lamas doing the same thing. And in the modern world, you know, it's just wrong. There is no possible reason for normal Western people to accept that any manager in any situation can hit his workers you know like it's just it's just not on and it needs to be dealt with it needs to be fully dealt with and the really big issue here as I see it is that you know people like Patrick and you know all your attendants who are probably watching now in your great devotion you have allowed your basic ethics to fall away you have taught yourself to stand there and watch someone being hit and you know I've heard of punches and um, people being knocked unconscious and you know fairly severe stuff so maybe not all of you have seen it but some of you have seen this kind of thing and you've taught yourself to treat that as normal okay now whatever beliefs allowed you to do that are very suspect and they need to be examined and I hope that you, Rinpoche, and all of your team, that you have the strength, the real strength of a real Bodhisattva, to examine those beliefs and to let them go. I saw this whole thing as a fabulous, wonderful manure for uh, growth of uh, Tibetan Buddhism in, in the West. I saw it as a turning point where Sogyu Rinpoche could really leave his mark by behaving as an enlightened being should uh, and completely being able to just open up and say, yeah, I did that and oh, okay, now I can see that it wasn't appropriate. Um, okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to actually practice the teachings that I've been teaching you for years. I'm going to go off and do a hundred thousand um, recitations of Vajrasattva practice, um, all while being very, very clear about the fact that um, I've done something that's not that's not on, and um, I'm going to look at the way that I taught and um, 
my interpretation of certain teachings that actually allowed people to be enablers, to enable the abuse, to support the abuse, to continue it for years. You know, I thought you were capable of doing that. I thought, yeah, Rinpoche can do that, it's easy, it's just, what was it you said? Renunciation is being able to accept all of Paris in one day and giving it all back the next. Can you give away your power? Can you give it all up? Hmm? I thought you could. I thought, yeah. No sweat. You know, Rimshay's finally been exposed. You'll look at what he's done and go, oh, okay, game's up. All right, time for a change. And because <laughs> cause I thought you were kind of um, capable of doing that. So I also, also thought that Rigpa was capable of doing that. I really thought that people like Patrick were... Able, would be able to kind of step back and go, okay, yeah, there really is something not quite right here. But what I've seen is that even though um, so what appear to be, you know, fairly good initiatives have been sort of put up, um, the underlying causes have not been looked at. And since there's no apology coming from management who did watch cover up and enable for years since there's no apology coming from there either then obviously they don't also don't realize that there's something wrong so until you can accept and admit that the behavior outlined by those eight students in that letter to the sangha um, was actually highly inappropriate and that it needs to be something needs to be done so that this never happens again not just in Rigpa but it, hopefully in any Tibetan Buddhist organization you know if, if you could do that it'd be wonderful you'd turn this whole thing around and everyone would then be going oh, so your Rinpoche is so great you know he could do that he could just Look at these beliefs and go, no guys, look, you know, this is damaging. And His Holiness has shown the way. Minju Rinpoche has shown the way. Um, so, you know, it's not like you'd be alone out of a limb. I know, you're, I know you're not well, and so that makes it really, really hard. But, you know, I wonder who you're listening to. I mean, Augustin Tobigil said that, um, you know, if someone's a great lama, then they can kill someone and it's not a problem. I mean, I'm sorry, Rinpoche, but <laughs> it just doesn't wash. It just, you know, that's just not on. Um, it's, you can't just go around killing people, you know, <laughs> because you're supposedly some enlightened being. And an enlightened being wouldn't do that anyway. And, you know, you can, you can say, oh, you know, she doesn't know anything. She's just a student. But I um, think, no, I don't think. I just know. Robert Thurman said that, you know, when you become enlightened, you become the unceasing energy of um, benefit for beings. So, you know, the fact that you have caused harm, you really have, should give you pause. And the fact that you didn't mean to cause harm, that your desire was only to bring benefit, you know, that's fine, it's admirable, but it doesn't change the fact that those wounds that you inflicted did not spontaneously heal. So I'm sorry if this is too bold, but you know, from looking outside, I wonder if anyone's being bold enough with you, you know, because what I see with um, Rigpa is that they're digging themselves deeper and deeper into a great big hole, which is labeling, basically are gonna label them as fundamental, fundamentalist and basically irrelevant. So if that's what you want, if you're happy to see, you know, everything that you've set up, um, be relegated to the fundamentalist sort of side of religion and, you know, normal, intelligent people kind of stay away from it because it's got a very, very narrow view of um, teachings which are, are basically overloaded with cultural um, baggage, then fine, just keep doing what you're doing. But if you want to be remembered as someone who really did something very special for Tibetan Buddhism in the West, then you need to be bold. You need to have the courage of a Bodhisattva. You need to practice Vajrasattva. You need to um, 
You need to acknowledge what you've done, regret it and apologise. Then something really ma magnificent could come out of this. Tell Patrick to apologise too. And tell him to start looking at the beliefs that allowed him to see all of that as normal and think it was absolutely fine, because it's not absolutely fine. It's completely against what the Buddha taught. And so, you know, if you don't examine that, you're not saving, you're not saving Buddhism, you're destroying it. That's it. It's how it is. I'm sure you don't want to destroy your religion. I hope you're talking to Minjur and Vijay. I hope you talk to the Dalai Lama. Because they have a vision. They have a way of seeing that it's very true to the teachings, but you know, it rings true. Whereas saying that um, these eight students are going to go to hell for being honest and for preventing other people from being harmed, that doesn't ring true. It just does not ring true. So, um, yeah, maybe I'm deluded, but, you know, even for you, Lama, there is danger. Thank you for everything that you did for me. I'll always acknowledge you as my teacher and be grateful. But I can't take teachings from you anymore, not now that I know that um, you basically don't walk your talk. That's it. That's all. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. That's all I've got to say.